Hey everyone, you are now listening to Flip the Switch, how to find the light in every dark shadow on the Clear Source Radio Network. And as always, thank you so much for listening. Standing at the corner. <laughs> and gentlemen, thank you so much for joining me once again. You are now listening to Flip the Switch, How to Find the Light in Every Dark Shadow, part of the Clear Source Radio Network, where people inspire people. I'm your host, my name is Melanie Rogers, and I want to tell everybody, those who have listened to my show, up until now, they're going to understand that. (laughs) This, the new people, I'm going to explain it momentarily. Happy New Year! I hope everyone is having a wonderful year. I hope everyone is reflecting back on those feelings that the majority of people, or I believe the majority of people have at the beginning of each year. The beginning is a beginning and every year it seems like so many people are ready to just kick the last year to the curb, you know, because part of what I see and used to experience is that people tend to, in my humble opinion, people tend to hold on to the negative within the year. Therefore, that tells me that people are concentrating more on the negative throughout the year. And by the end of the year, that's why they're ready for that year to go and they're ready for the new year to start. And the problem with that that I see and have experienced in the past is that first, it seems like it makes the years go by fast. And time just seems like it's flying by so fast anyway, it's scary. And the other part of that is if everyone's uh, constantly concentrating on their perceived negative or their difficult times through the year as difficult times and they're leaving it as that, if they're leaving it as just bad scenarios without taking out sorry for the text there, without taking out the lessons and flipping the switch and finding the positive in it and such, then that tells me that through all these years toward the end of life, all we're paying attention to is difficult times and we're not showing gratitude. We're not looking for the light in every dark shadow. Okay. So for the new listeners, because I know there's some new listeners and I thank you so much for tuning in. That's basically a lot of what my show is. It's concentrating on flipping the switch, looking at things from different perspectives, whether it's me or having guests come on. And it's looking for the light in every dark shadow because we all go through difficult times. I have been for the last year. I'm presently going through difficult times, which is why tonight's show is actually important to me on a personal level. And it's occasionally paying attention and making myself Pay attention to the blessings and being thankful for all situations. The lessons in dark situations are our perceived negative situations as well as recognizing our blessings. Okay, so that's why I take us back because the majority of people who I or my perceived, my perception is that the majority of people in the world are excited about the new year because they look at it as a chance to start over. Like, I'm going to make this my year. I hear that a lot. I say it a lot. 2000 blah, blah, blah is going to be my year. Like, kick the last year to the curb. Well, I say happy new year because I always like people to reflect back to that mindset, that, that positive mindset that people do at the beginning of the year, that they tend to do at the beginning of the year. So happy new year. Let's remind ourselves of how we were feeling, you know, at least the majority of people, I think at the beginning of each year and go back to that and reflect on the last few months. It's May already. I can't believe it's already past the first week of May. That's crazy to me. That shows that time just feels like it's going by faster and faster. So what do we really want to hold on to if time's fleeting And if we're just getting older and older and our life is just 
speeding through, do we really want to keep concentrating on everything that feels bad throughout the year or do we want to utilize it as a resource? Find the lessons in it. Find ways to utilize that information, change things around so that the rest of our lives slow down and we can concentrate on the good stuff. Okay, so happy new year to everybody out there. Let me check this real quick. Just make sure I'm going out because sometimes people, oh, okay. Okay. Now what I wanted to talk about is I have a lot of stuff going on in my head right now. And you know me when I have a flood of emotions and a flood of thoughts, that's what the show's been about over the last year, starting, starting almost starting over a year ago when I went through all of the emotional stress and such when my animals passed during that time. It's become very significant to me. I'm not going to talk about that tonight because after a year, it's not about holding on to those sad memories. It's about learning all the lessons and dealing with everything that's been opened up since. So that's the point. It's been a year, folks. Oh my gosh. May 5th was when I lost Bosco, which was my second dog three weeks after journey. And if you've listened to the show over that period of time, you know, I've used it as my, my, basically my on-air diary. It was a way of helping me stay open and helping me communicate where otherwise I would have allowed a lot of stuff to build up inside and that heaviness and saturation. And when you suppress those kind of things, those are actual damaged areas that get pushed deep down. I'm trying, I'm in that phase of life where I'm trying to pull everything up and I'm trying to learn lessons from past scenarios and find ways to actually release it and heal. Okay. And I'm trying to bring it to everybody else so that maybe other people can do the same thing or at least get something out of it. Now, tonight's show is very special to me because here's why. I think that showing gratitude is very important. I think that recognizing our blessings is extremely important. And I don't necessarily think that everyone has that ability to do so. Um, I, that's not a cut down at all. I've described this before. I have a show that I've aired twice now over Thanksgiving, both times, cause I thought it fit and it was about acknowledging and expressing gratitude, basically being thankful, but here's how I describe it. Here's how I see it. You have to understand I visualize things and I pass it along in that way because that's how it comes to me in my head is almost like cartoons or whatever I visualize that feels right to explain it that way and hope that other people can see it that way. I visualize it like an untapped emotion. If you don't experience something like say you've never had your heart broken, then how do you recognize when the opposite happens. That might not be a good analogy. Um, I think that gratitude is something that we have that a lot of people don't recognize. Maybe they recognize it once they have something taken away. Okay. It's like finding the light in every dark shadow. You can't recognize the good unless you have the bad. Good can't exist without evil. Light can't exist without dark. Look at it. A shadow. You put a shadow on the wall. Okay. There's the, there's the dark in the light. The light created the darkness or the darkness was created out of the light, whatever. But if darkness didn't exist, then we wouldn't even be able to see because everything would just be lit up. Um, how do you know love? That's just an ongoing emotion. If you never experience the opposite. Okay. Good and bad. If you never feel bad, How do you recognize when you feel good? You know what I mean? So basically gratitude, a lot of times being thankful or showing gratitude is something in my eyes that a lot of people don't either understand or even recognize, let alone be able to express it. So I look at it as a blessing that I'm able to be thankful, that I'm able to understand and recognize blessings in everything. Now, the reason that tonight I wanted to talk about it is twofold. Part of it is because of the radio show and the radio, excuse me, the radio network also going 
on or going on iHeartRadio, which is a big deal. Everything is exploding right now, okay? And I want to show my gratitude for that, for the people who have been there to support me, for everybody who's helped create this opportunity, but I also want to pass along the lessons learned and the huge Mel Eureka moments that I've gotten out of it because I think that that's amazing. There's different things that I just, under, you know, I'm just, I start thinking about. Now, people who have listened over the last year or two, you get me. You understand me by now. You know that I get excited when I have my Mal Eureka moments, when those basic things that probably everybody else knows, all of a sudden it actually applies and I get it. Those little things, stop and smell the roses. Okay, we can say that till the end of time and be like, oh yeah, I totally picture it. But then one day it could really become significant. One day you can be walking and really saturated in your mind with whatever, you know, pulling you down and you could just randomly out of nowhere, turn around and smell a rose. And maybe that kind of pulls you into the moment. And all of a sudden it makes sense. All of a sudden it's take time to stop and smell the roses. That's how I describe my Mel Eureka moments. Okay. Some of those things can be the most obvious things and I get it and I know it and I can say it and I can quote it and put it in memes and all this, you know, great inspirational stuff. But that moment when it all of a sudden applies and it makes sense on a very deep level. Okay. So I've had Mel Eureka moments just based on going on iHeartRadio and just based on the whole radio show, the radio network, Clear Source Radio and such. That opens up a whole lot because to me, being me, it opens up a lot of gratitude and thankfulness. It pulls me into a place of appreciation and positive thoughts and feelings. Now, why is that right off the bat significant? Because I've had a lot of really dark, (laughs) dark things happening, what I consider dark things. And it's in perfect timing. Everything seems severe right now. Tell you the truth. Everything seems extreme. It's like I have really, really, really good things happening, which have me feeling elated. At the same time, I have a couple of different scenarios that make me feel like I have a weight that's so heavy on me. It's crushing me. I learn lessons in everything. I'm analyzing those lessons. I'm learning those lessons. I'm letting myself feel those dark feelings. But at the same time, paying attention to the blessings helps pull me out of the darkness in those areas of life that are causing me pain and really helps me focus on the lessons in that darkness. So even my negative situations right now are my perceived negative situations, which is what I always say. It's a perception. I think everything's for a reason. I think everything is meant to be. I think there's lessons learned in every difficult area of life. Sometimes we get saturated in those emotions. I do. And it's hard to think along those lines. You just look at it as a really heavy time. And we all go into our ourselves to a certain extent and handle it different ways. That's what I have steadily been growing and learning and trying to pass along to other people, which is why I tell you a lot of my scenarios. I'm not going to tell in depth, especially you know, especially with a couple of the scenarios I have going on, but because it's private and personal and it's not the point, but the point is that especially when you're going through those difficult times, I think it's crucially important to remind yourself of the things that are really good because it helps lighten the load. And when you can lighten the load and not completely be saturated, like I talked about a few weeks ago, actually needing to take that week off Because trying to deal with a lot of things, a lot of heaviness, just felt like, you know, I was saturating myself so much I couldn't pull myself out. So I took that moment to step away. Okay. I think gratitude does the same thing. I think everything from meditation to prayers to just really concentrating on gratitude, really paying attention to the good parts in life and the lessons that were learned and where they're taking you the opportunities and where they're taking you and how it happened. A lot of times we pay so much attention to our feelings or emotions. We're not really like paying attention to the actual miracles that are happening around us. Okay. I look at different things as miracles almost. Well, some I do look at as miracles. Sometimes I think, okay, I'm kind of seeing it along those lines, but when things are happening, And we're concentrating so much, so deeply in one place, 
might be not be realizing how many miracles are happening, how many universal things are falling into place. And I need to remind myself that often, especially when I'm going through something heavy. Now, also along those lines, I've had so many shows and, and the funny thing is, is when I start talking about all this kind of stuff, it, it really, it tickles me pink. Honestly, thinking about all the different shows that I've already had talking about these different perspectives in depth. And that makes me realize how much of the universe is working with me right now. I keep saying it because this is what I've experienced and this is actually after I've been told I've read Elizabeth Peru, you know, I'm all into Elizabeth Peru and her, her guidance when it comes to like universal things, what we're experiencing at what time, the universal pull, all this kind of stuff. It's real. Oh my gosh, it's real. I mean, I read that and it's like, oh my lordy, I am definitely going through all this. And that kind of thing is very, very, very significant in life. Okay. So... I did kind of just lose my train of thought. I'm sorry. I had a really big point to make. And I started thinking about like today's, today's, um, Elizabeth Peru forecast is what she called it. Ah, okay. So I had a point to make. And once again, I just totally forgot. But basically along those lines is, oh, I know where I was going. Yay me. Yay me. I was able to come back pretty quickly on that one. So, you know, that's a good sign. I have a lot in my head lately. So that's a really good sign. What Elizabeth Peru kept putting out there and what so many people who I look up to and believe in put out there is that the universe is set up to meet you halfway. It is the law of attraction, the secret. It is just drawing things to you. It is your thoughts or energy. You put it out there. If you know the universe reflects you, all that kind of stuff. I truly believe in it now because that's exactly what happens. Now, I think when things come back in a different way than you want, eventually you learn the lesson and you learn the reason behind it. And I have that going on as well. And it's difficult. You know, it's difficult when you don't get what you want or what you're attached to, being attached to the outcome. But over time, when you start learning the lessons behind it and what's truly meant to be is like a blessing. Okay. So, Meeting the universe halfway, I've talked about this a lot lately because, gosh, it's really true. But you you have to be specific enough in what you want to throw it out there. Okay, universe, this is what I want. And you have to believe in it. Because if you say it and then you don't truly... I've had this happen as well. I've done this for years. I, I, I looked up the law of attraction. I had a friend actually lend me the their DVDs or maybe even cassettes at this point. I think they were DVDs. <laughs> so anyway, the law of attraction... And, or it was the secret. I think there's, those are both along the same lines, but it was one of those programs. So I kept trying it and I've done this for years and I believe in it, but at the same time, I didn't put full force energy into it and full faith into it. When I would throw it out there going, okay, this is what I want because deep inside, I wasn't sure what I wanted. That was a key point in my life. Now, when I finally randomly out of nowhere, after all these years came to a conclusion this is what I want. Okay. I know for a fact, and I'm not afraid to commit to it because commitment has been a big thing for me. <laughs> afraid to commit to something and then be unhappy. You feel caged it, with anything. I'm not just talking about relationships. I'm just talking about anything. So a fear of mine has been throw myself too much into something and then lose the attraction to it. Projects, jobs. Thank goodness I have a career that I'm, you know, pretty much stuck in. I I want to say stuck in the fact that I'm not going to give it up after all these years and it's a good job, everything else, but uh people, everything else, you know, my fear was always cuz I I felt that caged in feeling and realized that I will be miserable if I put too much focus and energy into something that in a moment I'm all about and then I lose that interest. Okay? So especially for creative projects and stuff. And for my future goals, I've been afraid to do that because I didn't know deep inside what I really wanted. One of those things, and this is significant to tonight's show, by the way, one of those things, one of the first things that I finally in my head said, okay, you know what? This is what I want universe. Make it happen. Help me make it happen. Was my radio show. It took a little while because of course it was new to me and I wasn't exactly sure what I wanted with it. It was a bucket list item. I thought, hey, if I enjoy it over time, you know, I just wanted to keep a small number of people listening because 
I wanted to just do what I wanted with it. And I have from the very beginning of time. I've just done what I've wanted to do with it. And I wanted to feel free to pull out of that at any point in time that I wanted to, which is why I wasn't really big on a lot of listeners. It wasn't a focus. It's never been a focus. I want to keep it that way. At least I want to keep that focus as that's not my main objective. My main objective is to keep this and I have to. I have to keep this venue close to my heart. I have to keep the venue something that I'm attracted to and that I'm not afraid to commit to on a personal level or else, like I said, those commitment issues come in and I'll want to pull away. (laughs) So those are my own internal, I don't want to say demons, but those are the things that I'm overcoming. The radio show is the first thing that I started enjoying and I started putting so much energy when I first set it up, the creativity process, all this kind of stuff. My heart started going into it that I said, okay, universe, this is what I want. No ifs, ands, or buts. I want it to be a good show. I want it to be what deep inside it's supposed to be, even if that wasn't what I initially thought. I wanted it to go where it was supposed to go and make some sort of impact even on one person. Okay. Now, coming into all of this, which is what I really wanted to talk about, is proof to me that since I finally committed to something, not time-wise, I just committed to something that I wanted and I threw it out there and I had complete and total faith in the outcome and said, this is going to happen because that's what I decided. The universe met me halfway. That's part of what I think is ha- is happening lately. Now, all I've done is done the show. Yes, I've done a lot of work on my show, you know, a lot of creative process and all this kind of stuff and, and all that. But as far as gaining more viewers or listeners, I'm sorry, I did some video at some point, but as far as it expanding and the network expanding, all that kind of stuff, I've just done my own thing here. I didn't work hard to do that. And it's coming to me. It's kind of like I've been handed a gift and I sit here going my first instinct like other people would probably have as well going, why is this happening? How is this happening? Like, why are these people, i.e., you know, our network in general, our network of people working on the network, everything else. Why are they committed to my success? Why are they helping me when I need help for this or that? Like, why are people paying attention to what I'm saying? Why are people blah, blah, blah? Okay. That's a natural instinct. At least my natural instinct when people start, you know, when I start getting things success kind of coming toward me and I sit here going, well, I don't feel like I've really like worked hard to get that particular type of success. I, like I said, I've worked hard on the show, but it was a personal venue. Now I wasn't working on trying to get big networks and all this kind of stuff. The lesson in that, and this is the main point of it, is I believe that the, the law of attraction and believing in it and having faith and the universe meeting me halfway once I decided to commit to what I wanted is a huge part of that. Now there are people to thank, definitely people to thank. And I want to do that as well, as often as possible. I've done that throughout the last couple of years. I will stop and mention someone. I think it's very, very, very important to stay grounded and, and such in that area as well, because This has more to do with other things going on in my life, which like I said, I'll probably end up talking about because I'm learning so many lessons and I think that they're really good lessons. Humility and humbleness is a big part of my life these days and it's because of a huge mistake I made. Like I said, another show, I'm not going to get, I can't, I can't really get into details in the exact scenario, but it had to do with a big mistake that I made and in the process I've had to experience humility to a certain extent. I've learned a lot of lessons and I've also seen a lot of things in people and I've seen a lot in myself and I've been tested and I'm now grateful for those tests. Okay. So what's interesting about that 
is that because I've experienced that and it's the complete opposite of what I'm experiencing with the, with the possibilities of my show and of the the radio network, clear source radio and where it's going to go and how many people we're going to ultimately be able to affect, which has me on a high. I'm in an ultimate low on the other side right now in career wise, just with a mistake and attitudes and such. And also on a personal side of my life, which is painful and I'm learning a lot of lessons. It's a huge offset. It's imperfect timing. Lessons are being learned. That's my point. Okay. So when you sit there, here's my point and here's, here's part of what I really wanted to get out there because this is a huge Mal Eureka moment. As much as we want to talk about letting the universe work with us and as much as we want to talk about you know, drawing things to us. You have to have faith. We have to have faith that it's going to happen and that everything is going to happen as it should and as it's supposed to. And along the lines of what my show set up, we have to look for the light in every dark shadow. We have to take the lessons out of everything. The couple of scenarios that I have outside of the show, some I've briefly talked about, the work thing is, is something new. I could leave it as disappointment in people, disappointment in myself, heart, you know, heartfelt emotions, feeling, you know, like, um, I've been crushed or like I've been, mm, what's the word, you know, different scenarios, you know, untrusting of people at this point because of different scenarios. I've had a lot of that kind of stuff come. Now, the old me as of many years ago, would have concentrated on that. I would no longer give a man the time of day. I would not open my heart up to another man. I would not trust the majority of people around me. And I would use that as an excuse. They did this to me, or I can't trust, you know, anybody. I would be disappointed in the, um, some of the things that are happening as far as the work related thing and how, some people have reacted in, in a personal way versus a professional way, but at the same time, but what I'm, well, what I'm doing with all that, and like I said, I'll talk about this later, but is, is I have learned to take the positive out of it. Instead, I have learned to understand that things like the right side over here, the network, the show, the possibilities, how many people believed in me and how many people really have shown me support, how many people have listened to my words, how many people have worked to help me get somewhere, even when I wasn't asking for it or even seeing that they were doing so. Okay. I can concentrate on that and that offsets everything else, but not only does it offset it, it helps me look at my other perceived negative situations with a whole new light and not just disappointment or anger or frustration or hurt or even self, you know, turning on myself a little bit in disappointment, all this kind of stuff. So my big point, like I said, isn't about all of my scenarios going on. My big point is what I'm learning in these scenarios and what I want to get out to other people. People and the universe, I've learned, are working in your favor. Sometimes it takes painful situations. Sometimes it takes humility. And I'm feeling humility in two different areas of life right now. I'm humbled in that. I could sit there and stay down and feel low about that. But I realize that that's a very good place for me to be. Because when you're humbled and you feel humility, it gives you a good foundation. It gives you a good base to rise up. Okay. Take responsibility, all this kind of stuff and rise up. All the good stuff on the other side reinstills that the universe is working to help you in all ways. I'm getting rewarded over here to the right, I'm getting rewarded. Over here to the left, I'm learning lessons. I'm also learning to ground myself by humility and by humbleness. And I'm learning to treat myself better in holding myself accountable at the same time, not beating myself up, but also kind of understanding my surroundings 
as well. So many lessons, it's amazing. Flip the switch, how to find the light in every dark shadow. This falls along all of that. This makes sense to me what's going on in my world right now. It's very hard. You know, this this mix of emotions is very difficult for me, especially an empath, which is why I'm feeling such a, a deep mix of emotions. So the lesson, like I said in it, is that everything is a lesson and the universe is working with us even if it's painful. You ever hear that song, Thank God for Unanswered Prayers? I've had that over and over and over. Now I used to relate it to... Um, I used to relate it to boyfriends to tell you the truth, mostly because there's one boyfriend that that song really reminded me of that song was popular when I was with him. But now I look at it, not necessarily just guys or anything like that. Thank God for unanswered prayers by Garth Brooks. It is, you know, thank God for not answering what I was asking for. I think that God or whoever you want to pray to, whoever you want to think about, whoever you talk to or whatever you do when you throw it out to the universe, what you want, it doesn't always come back to you exactly how you want it, but I'm starting to learn that that's with reason. You know, I'm recognizing that I'm still getting my blessings. I'm getting what I truly want in different ways. But that I'm also being protected from things that will ultimately hurt me or I will ultimately regret. In some cases, kind of like my work scenario, it's things that I was throwing out to the universe. I will talk about that in another show. But it is, they are thoughts that I had been throwing out to the universe. I'd actually said it out loud a number of times. It's realizations within myself. Therefore, I drew it right back to me. An event happened, broke me right back down to humility and humbleness, lesson learned. And I'm taking that as a positive. Folks, decide what you want in life. Be flexible with how it comes to you. Okay? Throw it out there to the universe. Commit to it. Have faith in it. The universe is going to meet you halfway. You have to work toward it. These are, these are things coming from Elizabeth Peru. I'm not going to take credit for that. But hearing her words, or re, you know, well, I, I, she does videos as well, reading her words and reading this amongst a lot of different, very inspirational people, finally applying it and seeing how it comes back to me, I'm telling you it works. It's amazing to me. It's magic. And like I said, it's not always going to come back. You're going to have tears in your eyes because boy, I've struggled. I've thrown things out there that I thought I really wanted and I've been bashed like kind of smacked back in the face, knocked down, but I'm realizing it that it always ends up with reason. And that's that's what I'm responsible for is understanding those lessons and understanding that what I truly want deep inside, it might be it might, might not be in the details. I might throw out a very detailed picture of what I want, and eventually I may get what I want and the details might be completely different. If you understand what I'm saying there. And like I said, while I may be concentrating over here on the left and saturating myself in all of the hard stuff, it would not be fair to anybody, myself especially, or giving credit to the universe to not pay attention to the rewards that are over here on my right. I link it all. I'm starting to link it all. Okay. Hope I didn't get too, too, too in depth with that. I usually do, but you've got to understand I'm in such a phase of life where my brain and my heart are both just diving in completely. And when I get on here and you got to understand also before I got on here tonight, I was in a, an emotional turmoil kind of state of mind. And I've had so much in my head, everything from the good stuff to every, each and every scenario that I've felt, that I've seen, that my mind chatter has been thrown at me, everything that I'm behind on, all that stuff that I've talked about in my show, Mind Chatter, of course, has come back to me and it will continue to come back to me. And it's, you know, it's necessary for me to take different steps or whatever to curtail that, but it's all with reason. So before I came on tonight, I wasn't in an emotionally great place, but talking to people, putting it out there to all of you helps me understand it better. Helps me. I've said this before. This is kind of funny. I've said this a couple of times. It's one thing to think in your head and realize different things. 
and be like, oh, yay, you know, you've got a little conversation going on in your head. Hey, we all do, so don't start. <laughs> uh, but it's another thing, and I don't know why, but when I actually say it out loud and I hear the words come out my mouth and back through my ears, it suddenly makes sense to me. It's like a Mel Eureka moment. I don't get it. I'm sure there's something actually behind that. But thinking about it, I can't really apply it when I'm just thinking about it. When I say it out loud and I hear myself, or even when I go back and I listen to my own show, it's like somebody else is telling me and it's like all of a sudden I can apply it and it makes more sense to me. Coming on tonight actually enhances my gratitude. It helps me to curtail all of the emotions that I've been going through with all of the scenarios. It keeps my head floating up above the water, helps me concentrate on the lessons instead of the pain in different situations, helps me understand how all this is working as I'm saying it. So know that right now in this moment, I hope I'm affecting other people, but more than anything, and this is what I want to continue during my show. My show has been created and I did not realize this when I first set it up. My show basically has been created to feed my own soul, to help me grow as a person. And in the process, if I can help other people, oh my gosh, this is what I meant for then. And this is why somebody like, and here we come into the main part of the show, Ronald Reeder is a huge part of me being able to get all of my stuff within myself out there to everybody else in a positive way. Now, Ron, I want to thank Ron because I'm going to start doing my accolades here. Clear Source Radio is a radio network. It is an international radio network come to learn that we have well, the last I was told and mind you this was about a year and a half ago so I don't even know where we are now we had 75 countries listening I know he used to text me and t- and I was just tickled when I heard this he's like for whatever reason Germany always listens to you so I for a while I was thanking Germany I thank you guys once again I thank you Germany for listening and 75 countries, and I don't even know how many thousands of listeners to Clear Source Radio at this point. I know back then it was a lot. That's huge for a radio network that was new. Okay. Ron created this network very specifically to be inspiring and not just, I want a radio network. I want to start making money. Let's bring everybody in here. All of the different hosts, and you probably heard a lot of this from Tiffany Lewis. Her show, Be the Change, follows mine. I'm going to talk about Tiffany in a moment. (laughs) Ears perked, young lady, because here it comes. Um, Tiffany's an amazing person as well. Her show follows my show. And I know last week she had a passion because of where we're going within the network. She had a passion behind it as well. So you probably heard a lot of this from her. But this shows how the hosts on Clear Source Radio, we all have our different shows, but we all do have that passion behind what we're doing because you can hear when you, you know, listen to Tiffany, the passion behind what she's doing in this world and the venue of Clear Source Radio being a great place to put it out there. Clear Source Radio itself and all of the hosts, all of the shows, Ron Reader, the owner and creator of, had a clear vision and it's coming to fruition in a short period of time and it's with reason. And the reason is because he's very selective on what content he wants out there. Not, I'm not talking in a way of um, controlling it. He wants it to be positive because what Ron, and these are going to hopefully, you know, he'll, he'll come on at some point when I do have um, guests again, he'll come on and he'll, you know, let everybody know how he came up with this in the first place. It wasn't about success as a radio show or radio network, it wasn't about, it, it was basically about really giving people what is needed out there. And I know I've talked to Ron for two years now. And every time we talk, it's a passion getting out to people, what people need to inspire each other, to help people, to motivate people, for people to start coming together again. In the world that's out there right now, it is very difficult. Like I said, I'm an empathic person. I think most of the hosts are empaths. And I think that's why we ended up, you know, on Clear Source Radio, because we feel that energy and 
I think it's probably the venue for a lot of us just to, you know, get, get those, uh, emotions, that energy that we absorb and that we feel everything else out. It's kind of a grounding spot. And that's actually a Mel Eureka moment that I just realized, <laughs> but anyway, try not to go everywhere, but I kind of am. I know that Ron, his heart is definitely behind this network and he wants hosts. He wants shows that are going to be on the network to really follow suit in helping people, help bring people together, help inspire people, help people in general. I am honored and once again, humbled that two years ago, Ron Reeder, simply a Facebook friend, saw something in me in just my Facebook posts where he gave me the opportunity and trusted me with his vision and offered me, you know, a spot on his radio network. I thank you from the bottom of my heart because he's been nothing but supportive. He's helped me with all my equipment issues. He's really done a lot of work to bring good content. I know some of his visions for future hosts. I'm talking, you're going to have a lot of content to choose from. Just, just key up clear source radio at any time. And whoever you're listening to at the time is going to be inspiring in one way or another. And I think that that's fantastic. I think that's unique compared to a lot of the ra- and I'm not about comparing, not really about comparing. I'm just saying, I think it is a great venue. I'm not sure that all other radio networks are that clear on intent as far as just being positive, but I'm not going to knock down anybody else in the process. Cause that's not what we do. So thank you, Ronald reader. And also Ron has his own show on Sunday evenings, uh, Ron the medium. <laughs> so I strongly suggest you tune in at any time to clear source radio. If you want to be lifted up, if you want your heart touched, if you want, I don't know, to laugh. Sometimes I can be funny. <laughs> you know, if I'm in the mood, I can be funny. Now, Thank you, Ron Reeder. I'm also going to thank once again, Tiffany Lewis. Tiffany is amazing. Tiffany follows my show. I think we pretty much decided that we work so well together without even communicating. It's funny because our shows are completely different, but yet I think our hearts in the same place and we end up kind of doing shows that really, what's the word? They complement each other. Okay, so I think we've decided that we're going to try, if either one of us have to change days or times or whatever, we're going to try really hard to stay kind of the dynamic duo as far as, you know, you get a two-hour wham-bam, you know, two hours, two women who are passionate about what they think and what they do, and Tiffany's show is amazing. Everything that Tiffany does is amazing. Her um, Be the Change is her show. It follows mine on Tuesday evenings, 8 o'clock p.m., Eastern Standard Time. And um, she also has so many venues at this point outside of that, uh, helping every kind of scenario, mostly concentrating on suicide and bullying and such. Pens for Pals is her organization. I strongly suggest you look into it. And Tiffany, one of the main reasons I want to thank Tiffany from the bottom of my heart is that Tiffany came onto the network and really, really, really worked on building the network itself to get it out there. And that includes my show. And she has been amazing at, you know, trying to get us on the map so that more people can listen to an inspiring radio network. I wouldn't be here I wouldn't be talking to as many people as I'm apparently talking to if it wasn't for both of them. I didn't do that work. I mean, I worked on my own show, but I didn't, I didn't work, you know, hard like that to really, you know, make things shine. So I thank you so much, Tiffany. You're just a wonderful person. My dad, of course, you know, technically, technically my dad's going to go on the top of that list because everybody... Everyone who's listened knows that my dad's my hero. He's been my hero since I was a kid. A lot of what I do ends up, even in the back of my mind, I didn't even realize this. Sometimes when I talk to my dad and we talk about the show, we talked about the show a lot at the beginning, especially. Um, We talk about the show still, but it's, you know, I've been doing it for so long now. It's kind of, it's not a new thing. Like I need ideas or I need this or I need that. Um, My dad 
has been like my biggest, he's, I don't want to say fan cause I don't have fans has been my biggest inspiration and supporter. My dad will listen to my show and that's opened up huge things between my dad and me. That's opened up a lot. And that I'm very appreciative of. My dad, I realize that a lot of times I'll curtail. I won't change what my content is or whatever, but a lot of times my brain goes in that direction of what my dad would like to hear. Isn't that funny? Part of it is my dad says, I like just listening to you when I start talking about bringing guests again. And I do want to bring guests on. But when I start feeling like, okay, you're just talking too much. You need to start getting guests back on here. And my dad comes back and says, I like listening to you. I like when you talk, when you've got things to say. That validates, which we shouldn't be validated by the outside people. But come on, some people do validate us to a certain extent. You know, some people who mean that much to us. So when he tells me that, I suddenly don't feel bad about changing the venue, you know, since I changed it over the last year. I will go back to guests, like I said, at different times, but I no longer feel like I have to follow a certain venue. I guess with daddy's permission, it kind of ends up being that way. It kind of ends up feeling like with daddy's permission. So I just, not really. I just think that that's funny. But um, my dad, of course, is is my all time. I, I love the fact that I feel like our the radio show in general, me being able to, I don't want to say vent because I don't really vent, but me being able to just open myself up on here. A lot of times my dad's face is who I picture. So I love you, daddy, always and forever. My mom as well. I don't ever want to like seclude my mom from this. My mom's not much into like listening to radio shows and all this kind of stuff. I'm not really sure that my mom's ever heard my radio show, but I don't really, you know, I don't really make a big deal about it and talk about it. But my mom is truly, my mom and I, we have fun. We talk when we talk on the phone. We've always had a lot of fun. My mom's a special person. She's gone through a lot in her life as well. And she's actually been a huge inspiration for me on the show as well. Understanding my mom. And empathy going into understanding different things about my mom. My mom's kind of been amused, to tell you the truth, in a very good way. So my mom is, you know, is very dear to me. And we have a very special relationship. She's a very, very special person. Uh, She is very private. That's why a lot of times I don't bring my mom up a lot. Because I don't think she would appreciate it. And that's her that's her right and her choice. So I'm, I'm fine with that. But that's why a lot of times you'll hear me talk about my dad all the time. He's always been my hero, you know, but my mom is kind of the silent one behind it as well. And it's only for her own privacy that I don't talk a lot about it or about her, but she's a very, very, very inspirational person to me and doing these shows, you know, she's part of so many of my mindsets you know, she's helping to make my show a success without even realizing it. So I love my mom. It's almost Mother's Day. I need to get that present out there. I'm always late and I've had that present for about a month now. Okay. Okay. So quickly, now I'm going to mention because I only have like 13 minutes left. Uh, I'm going to mention a few people by name. Once again, I apologize in advance if I leave people out. I did not write a list. I meant to, and then I started thinking though, every time I start writing a list, then I end up, I end up writing a list that doesn't end. And I'm sure people don't want to tune in to hear all this, but there are some special people from the top of my head. I want to thank because believe it or not, when you show support and it's ongoing support, or when you show support in very specific times, it's one thing. And I still appreciate everybody who shows support. When I'm on the top of my game, when I'm first starting the show and I was very excited about it, I had a huge number of people I consider friends showing me support. And I get it and I'm completely okay with the fact that, you know, people over time, if it's not your venue, then, you know, who's going to take that time out? And I don't want anybody to listen to the show if they're not getting something out of it. I don't need, I don't need people just because they're friends or family or anything else to listen to the show. I just want people to listen to the show who get something out of it. But that being said, it is one thing when you're flying high kind of, kind of thing to get that support from people. But there are some people who have shown support in different ways. And I recognize everything to where they don't even realize that they've lifted me in times where I needed it. They've either lifted me up, they've given me inspiration, they have 
maybe without realizing it, taken me from a place of huge self-doubt, even having to do with flip the switch or life in general and different things in life to a sudden feeling of empowerment, purpose, and success. Okay. And a lot of it's timing. A lot of it's the way they show support. A lot of it's showing that support where I know that there's no hidden agenda, even if people don't realize they have a hidden agenda. And a lot of times people, they have kind of a hidden agenda to show support. They may not even realize it at the time, but kind of once that little area of opportunity is passed, they suddenly don't really notice you anymore or whatever. And I don't think everyone does that on purpose. I don't think they mean to do that, but I've had, you know, a lot of that happen, but I'm talking about very specific people who even in life, outside of the show, but even in life, they tend to just be there. And sometimes I don't understand why I might sit here thinking, why, why do you show me so much support? Like what in, you know, your first instinct is what can you get out of this? Because that's how we've been conditioned. And I have as well. Over time, you have enough people that, you know, usually as an opportunity and that's whether you have a radio show or not, or they're there for a certain period of your time. And then all of a sudden they get distracted and you're not important anymore, whatever. That's just life. You know, we've all gone through that, but, but that makes it hard sometimes when somebody comes into your life and they're showing you support and they're showing you that friendship. And, and when it's kind of sad, but when your first instinct is, okay, what do they want from me? I don't understand what they're trying to get from me. I better keep my guard up, you know? Understanding everything that life is bringing to me and has been over a lifetime, but especially over the last couple of years and especially when since the show started, my own words will come into effect and I'll pay attention and start going along the mindset of what I put out to other people. And I've lowered that guard a little bit. I really recognize because I'm empathic and, and very intuitive. I do recognize uh, kind of a mile away when people are opportunistic or when I see them trying to create something so that they can get something. And I more and more understand that. I'm less angry when that happens. I more understand it, but I can fi- I find ways to kind of block it. Along those same lines, I'm opening myself up a little more to the people who I know instinctively. They just do it because for whatever reason, and I think it has to do with soul groups. I think it has to do with them to some extent being either part of my soul family where we are meant to support each other. We have different soul families. I believe these are my beliefs, different soul families, different people that over time you end up being in each other's lives because your whole energy flows and you have a reason, a collective reason for supporting each other. I'm starting to recognize that kind of stuff too. Even people I never would have thought, like if you think in terms of hanging out or going out like friendship in that way, friendships different than soul families, I believe. And you think, wow, I don't even know that my personality would really, you know, like I can't see that. But if you keep focusing on the friendship part, like who would I have in my friendship circle, you know, going out, enjoying time together or whatever. A lot of times you don't picture the other people that come into your life and show you so much support. Okay. For whatever reason, even if it's just that your personalities differ, your age differs, you look at different things in life differently or whatever the scenario is. So I find it interesting that I'm thinking right now out of nowhere. Of course, I just started thinking about this difference between like friendship circles and soul family. I think a lot of people, there's a lot of people who do overlap, by the way. I have a lot of people who have shown me extreme or very, very, very good support over time who I look at as close friends. And also I understand that they're part of my soul family. So I'm going to have to get into a show, my vision, at least on soul families and twin flames and all this kind of stuff, my own personal perspective, because that's what my show is about. My personal perspectives. Anyway. All right. I kind of went off in a tantrum. Uh Some of the people that I want to specifically call out really quickly. Amanda Tucker, Amanda. I love Amanda. And I will admit when I first met Amanda, online, basically she showed me so much support and she showed the network so much support. My instincts kicked in right off the bat going, why does this person show me so much support? What does she want from me? Okay. I better keep my guard up. (laughs) But over time, my instincts changed and I started seeing her for the wonderful person that she is. And she's just a beautiful person that is living through life. Just like I am struggling in different areas 
And I'm not going to tell too much personal stuff here because it's not my place to do so. But I started recognizing similarities in that way. And I started realizing that maybe she sees those same similarities in me. And I don't put that out to everybody. There are areas where, you know, I think that without most people understanding, I can relate to And I think she can relate to me in those areas. So anyway, thank you, Amanda Tucker. You have been just such a beautiful person. You really are. I see who you are inside. You're very special. And I thank you for all the support that you've shown me. And I hope to, you know, reflect that back, get out of my own head and out of my own situations and, you know, be able to reflect back on the people who have made such an impact on my, on myself. Okay. My friend Dawn Marie, especially at the very beginning, let me tell you, every glitch I had, she was right there texting me, (laughs) letting me know you're not airing or whatever the scenario was, but she didn't break off, you know, for the longest time. Um, 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 Amanda, I'm sorry. Dawn Marie was there. She was there from the beginning. And, uh, I just, I will always remember that. I appreciate so much support, especially at the beginning, you know, when I was first starting this. So Dawn Johnson, Don Johnson was actually on my show. Don is a very inspirational person. I suggest you go back and listen to her show. Um, It was 2016. It was, no, I'm sorry. It was 2017. It was one of the few guests I had in 2017. Don Johnson, she's always been so sweet toward me. Uh, we've developed an actual friendship outside of, you know, her being a guest and showing the network itself and our show support because we can relate. I think she can relate a lot to the network and the show. And Don actually was asked to be a Claire Soros radio host because we think she's really got a lot of what it takes. No pressure, Don. Bob Rosenberg. Bob's been my friend for many years now. Bob will to power. He's been on my show as well. And uh, Bob is a very deep person, a very spiritual person. He's always been so supportive. This is before my show ever started. He was just a supportive person and friend. And I truly, I've noticed that from the beginning. He's as my life has become deeper and as my soul family, I guess I've recognized, I've recognized true authentic friendships He's definitely in there. So Bob Rosenberg, I love you dearly. I so appreciate all the support and I appreciate you as a person. I think that you, I get you. I understand you and I think you understand me. Fred Jones, my dear friend, Fred Jones, just the sweetest person in the world. Um, that's all I can say. Fred, Fred's been my pal. I love Fred. I've known him now for what, like six years, something like that. He's always been there to show support and just the love. My friend, I am running out of time now. I want to thank um, my friend, Kristen Baylog, Marie Jones, um, Lynette Wa- Walker, Washington. I've had all of them on my show, but they were also close friends of mine and they still are. They are inspiring women to me. They inspire me so much as women and their, their successes, their drive, their personalities, their essence and such. I want to thank all three of those ladies as well, because they really helped me catapult, um, my desires, I guess, catapult my desires for the show. And I will go back and listen to their shows. I've actually replayed their shows before. They're just wonderful women, wonderful people in general. But, uh, unfortunately I am out of time, you know, right now I want to thank everyone who's been a guest on my show because you've been a guest for, for good reason. And there's many other people who are not guests yet, but I have you on my list. Some I've communicated with who've shown so much support for the network, so much support for the show, for me personally, friendship wise, some I don't even know in person, but you've made a difference in my life. I'm thankful for that. I thank you right now more than anything for being those supportive people and those wonderful people who have made an impact on me in my life. So, um, I hope you enjoyed tonight's show. Like I said, I just, I feel that gratitude is very important, especially when you're dealing with other things. I think it helps concentrate back in a positive direction and also bring thanks to those who really help make things happen. I apologize to anybody who I didn't have a chance to mention because I, I still have so many names swimming in my head, but if I start mentioning now, I won't stop. And Tiffany comes on next and I don't want to interfere with her show. So please stay on the line. You are about to experience greatness once again with Tiffany Lewis on Be The Change coming up next on clearsourceradio.com. Thank you each and every person 
for so much. I love you all and good night.